The reason being the upper level winds are really not that strong, so it's not ripping the circulation apart as sometimes happens. Even though it's over land and it may be slowing a little bit, they're still is spinning about because there really isn't any upper level jet stream winds to tear it apart at this point. And because it is still a well-defined circulation, the flow around it is still drawing moisture right up off the Gulf of Mexico into parts of extreme southeast Texas and on into Louisiana. That flow coming right in off the Gulf, a tropical flow. There's a close-up, and boy, you can very clearly right here, northwest of Houston, see the spin with this still tropical system, you have to call it that, remnants of the tropical storm. And on the east side, still a plume of moisture coming right up here into Louisiana. And as mentioned at the top of the show, there has just been tremendous amounts of rain. Flood watches out all the way from East Texas, including Houston again, through the entire state of Louisiana, including Baton Rouge and New Orleans, on up through Mississippi and even northern Alabama. Let's go ahead and show you some of the pictures here in New Orleans. Again, this has just been tremendous rainfall. States of emergency, at last word, have been declared in nine separate parishes in Louisiana by the Louisiana governor. For a time today, the uh, causeway across Lake Pontchartrain was closed. That evidently now has reopened, but you can see the torrential rains here, massive street flooding going on, and some homes and businesses even inundated in some of the parishes with uh, rainwater. New Orleans there, you can see it's 7.63. Baton Rouge now up over 14. We'll be adding to this, but it has been raining tremendously hard there around Baton Rouge, and even earlier, a funnel cloud sighted there in East Baton Rouge Parish. There you can see the circulation center up here, right where it says past three hours. Centers right up here in the Piney Woods. Here's Houston, kind of in a gap, but watch out, Houston. We may get some more heavy rain before this day's through. And there you can see the moisture running on up over Baton Rouge and then right through the New Orleans area once again. Here is a look. Again, you can see that. Guys, in Central Park right now, we have 65 degrees. So get out there and enjoy. It looks like we'll see temperatures a little bit warmer than yesterday. We're starting off at 65, as I mentioned, in Central Park. At 67 in Levittown, 64 in White Plains doing any shopping today in Paramus. Looks good here too. Sunshine and 65. Later on today we'll be near 80 degrees in Paramus, 81 Central Park. And we'll stay in the 70s out on Long Island from Islip to Levittown. In Boston right now you have 66 degrees with lots of sunshine as well. Beautiful weather expected for this afternoon where temperatures will be in the mid-70s. 76 in Boston. That's 77 degrees in Lexington and 75 degrees in Worcester. Philadelphia, really more of the same. Lots of sunshine here today, too. Yesterday morning, we start off with clouds and light rain, but we're starting off with mainly clear skies out there, and we'll likely get up to about 80 degrees. Washington, D.C., also looking at some fantastic weather, getting up to 80, also 80 degrees in Baltimore. Annapolis getting up to about 79 degrees, and Reston have about 78 degrees and all that sunshine. Try to get out there and enjoy your lunch break outside in Chicago. Beautiful weather and it will be warmer for a change as our winds have shifted in direction. We'll look for those highs getting into the mid-70s and the Dallas-Fort Worth area also looks quite nice getting into the upper 80s. Mostly cloudy skies. We never did get any of that rain from the remnants of Allison, but boy, did it come close. We saw a mainly cloudy day yesterday and today we may see a few more breaks. Allison's remnants are going to leave and unfortunately it looks like another 24 hours that we're going to be dealing with very heavy rains. Could even be a little longer than that because Allison is not moving much at all, not budging. Now, we've had 62 storms, 63 if you include Allison now, which we'll have to include because Allison developed in the Gulf of Mexico, moved on shore last Wednesday at about 2 o'clock in the morning. So 63 storms uh, through uh, the 2001 season. This, of course, still accurate through the 2000 Atlantic Basin hurricane season. So we've already been through with Allison now. Is there a berry on the horizon? Well, we'll tell you when we look out in the Atlantic in just a minute. At first, I want to show you how much rain has fallen because of Allison. You've heard the reports, I'm sure, on the news and here at the Weather Channel, 10 to 15 inches of rain in many locations. Baton Rouge is up to 16 inches of rain. It took totals like that to bring some of the communities in southern Louisiana to a surplus on the rain gauge since the beginning of the year. But when you factor it in over the long-term drought, it is still well below what we would typically get over southern Louisiana. And there'll be a 
continuation of heavy rains today. Further out in the Gulf of Mexico to the south toward the Bay of Campeche, no developments apparent. Now, if uh, we would see this Allison begin to rotate back out in the Gulf of Mexico, that would be a cause for concern. That is not the prognosis at this point in time. Strong wave has moved off of Africa, but it's too early in the year for these to develop. Very hostile environment out ahead of it in the Atlantic with shear and cold waters to confront first. In the Eastern Pacific, no developments here. That's good news. How about your weekend? How's that looking? Here's Kelly. Well, you know, the remnants from Allison will be sticking around a little longer than a lot of us would have liked here in the Gulf Coast states with heavy rain and some embedded thunderstorms. And when it's not raining, it is just all totaled up for the entire month of uh, May and April. You had only about one inch of rain, and then, of course, the skies have opened up so far this month. And in the first uh, eight days of June, you've had uh, 16 inches of rain in Baton Rouge and uh, about 31 inches of rain for the year already. Obviously, the flooding is not good news, but overall, the rain in Louisiana is good news after all the drought conditions uh, the last couple of years. So the rainfall is back, and although it has tapered off in uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans, more heavy downpours are likely as the day progresses. Where are the remnants of Allison? Well, right about in the vicinity of College Station, Texas, to the northwest of Houston. That's where the low pressure system is spinning around right now, and it continues to move very slowly to the southwest. Now, while downtown Houston, you seem to be in an area where the weather stabilized a little bit on the east side of town, and especially right along the Louisiana, Texas state line near the Sabine River and Sabine Reservoir, heavy tropical downpours persist, and many counties remain under flash flood warnings due to the fact that in the heaviest rain bands, you're seeing rainfall rates of two to four inches per hour. So it's a tremendously heavy tropical downpour type situation. Meanwhile, the rains are lighter near Atlanta, Chattanooga, and also to Augusta and Columbia, though some heavier downpours are now taking shape south of Birmingham in Alabama, moving on to the east. The atmosphere all over the south today, heavily laden with moisture, a tropical atmosphere, not only near the remnants of uh, Allison and Texas, but from uh, Louisiana and Mississippi all the way east to Georgia and the Carolinas. Temperatures are warming up. And east for New York City. Well, let's check out the weather map for the Northeast. It's been very quiet for most locales. About the only really trouble zone that we've had has been some patchy fog for parts of the Mid-Atlantic and back to the Central Appalachians. And we're still dealing with some locally dense fog currently around Parkersburg on into Huntington, likewise for Charleston, West Virginia. But that fog should be burning off very shortly. And indeed, most of the Northeast enjoying a stellar way at this time for Maryland and Pennsylvania. Northward across New York State and very quiet, very tranquil too across Vermont. See a lot of bands of heavy precipitation uh, headed eastward from that. Let's go ahead and show you what the picture looks like there. We'll begin with taking a look at the satellite picture. And as we do that, uh, I wanted to point out to you that the low center itself, you can see that is still pretty intact. You can see that counterclockwise rotation there. And notice that just as we've had all along, some of the moisture bands coming up in the Gulf of Mexico, quite a bit farther east, not directly associated with the remnants of uh, Allison. And that being the case, uh, there are some spotty areas where you get momentarily relief. For example, when we look at the radar now, we see uh, not very much in the houston Galveston area. That's uh, temporarily, anyway, moved east. Heavy rain from down Shreveport down through uh, uh, certainly uh, Lake Charles area, and extremely heavy rain there. New Orleans, uh, not quite so much as we saw yesterday, but also some of this moisture we see in here is headed in that direction. So we wouldn't want to say that New Orleans is entirely out of the woods either. Here's some of the amounts of rain. Uh, these are the storm totals since Tuesday. And you can see some rather incredible amounts of rain. And of course, that has caused flooding and flash flooding and lots of watches out. And you need to pay attention to where they are. Dr. Bill Gray revised his forecast yesterday. He always does that in early June. And now he's forecasting 12 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three majors. Of course, the key is here, what where are these hurricanes going to hit, especially the major hurricanes. I'm a little bit apprehensive to see the number of major hurricanes raised from two to three because that indicates a little bit stronger season. But the main thing is we've got to be ready in for no matter what happens. As we look out uh, across the Caribbean and the rest of the Gulf, everything is looking very benign. And now we had off the uh, west coast of Africa, uh, south of the Cape Verde Islands, we had a tropical wave, but that doesn't look nearly as formidable as it did 24 hours ago. In any case, it's much too early, most all the time, for anything to develop out there. That'll do it for this time. Now back to Bill. 
Okay, John, thank you very much again. Not only in Louisiana and Texas, but a good chunk of rain running from Alabama into North Carolina. And later on today, watch out. I know it's Florida, but right now, a look at the tropics with our hurricane expert, John Hope. Well, thank you very much indeed, Jim. And in the tropics, it's quiet out there except for the remnants of Allison. And they don't seem to want to go away, although I can see some sign today that we might be getting a little bit of tapering off. Let's have a look at some of the satellite pictures and the radar and see if we can explain that. Now, the low itself is somewhere in the vicinity of College Station. That, that's the old low that was Allison. It had been moving south some. I haven't seen a lot of south movement today. And we don't quite see the concentration of heavy showers around that center as we did. We continue, however, to see a copious moisture spreading up into Louisiana, especially uh, and along the Louisiana-Texas border from the Gulf of Mexico. That has shifted a little bit east today, but uh, it uh, right now, temporarily anyway, the, the Houston metropolitan area doesn't have very much. And most of the heavy rain, as you can see here, is to the west of New Orleans still. But it is moving in this direction, so I think that New Orleans will get at least one more blast of this. Now, I've heard some people express concern about this going back out over the water, perhaps regenerating. It could get very close to the water, but I think if it gets down there on the Gulf Coast, that upper air conditions are not going to be favorable for any generation. Now, as I look at this uh, radar around the, the little core of the storm, I don't quite see the concentration or the intensity of showers, say, that we saw 24 hours ago. Looking uh, now at uh, some of the rainfall amounts, as you know, they had just been staggering and some rainfall amounts, I think, that have been reported to us are higher than any of these. So a lot of flooding going on, a lot of flash floodings, and you need to keep up with that because still more rain, not quite over with yet. Now, Dr. Bill Gray yesterday came out with an update on his forecast. He does this every June. And the significant thing about what he had to say this time is that he has really raised the numbers, all of them. Uh, it went to the name storms 10 to 12, hurricanes I think 6 to 7, and major hurricanes uh, 2 to 3. That major hurricane business maybe concerns me a little more than anything else. Now that doesn't mean that we're going to get those, that hurricane in the United States, but it's a major hurricane that do hit landfall either in the United States or the Caribbean islands that we are very, very concerned about. Now looking out there today from the Atlantic, from the Gulf of Mexico, across the Caribbean, two-thirds of the way across the Atlantic, everything is looking about as benign as it possibly could. Now, we've had a couple of pretty healthy waves come off the coast of Africa, and this one that's here south of the Cape Verde Islands looked a little more threatening yesterday than it does today. In any case, it's pretty far south, and it's just simply really too early in the year. There's a reason why we don't see hurricanes or tropical storms develop out there in June, and I haven't seen anything yet this year that makes me think that any is about to. So that's the tropics for this time. Now I'll turn you back to Jim Cantori. Thank you, John. As always, my friend, here we go. Upper St. Martin Parish and also Iberia Parish in South Central Louisiana. Flash flood warnings. An estimated two inches of rain has fallen from St. Martinsville to the northwest side of New Iberia during the past one to two inches or one to two hours. So that is this batch of rain right in through here. And that is all heading north toward Baton Rouge. And we also have to keep an eye on this cluster down to the south, too, just off the coast. This is heading north toward New Orleans. Looks like a wet night in southern Louisiana again, where we're going to see more flash flood warnings come on in. We have a severe thunderstorm warning for Brevard County. A couple of cells developing, developing there on the sea breeze and then heading back toward the beaches. Keep an eye out in through here. Uh, looks like some heavy rain, too, as these are developing. They don't appear to be moving uh, quickly anytime soon, that's for sure. But our big problem with heavy rain, no doubt, sitting back here into Texas and Louisiana, where we continue to see flash flood watches tonight. And with the new rains developing in south central Louisiana, looks like more warnings coming out and more problems, which are down towards the south here. So the heavy rain is just sitting on the same spots. There could be some very serious flooding in these areas overnight, so keep that in mind. Again, Montgomery County, Walker County flash flood warnings. We have a number of flash flood warnings in southeastern Louisiana, including St. Charles Parish, New Orleans. Very heavy rain here, too, along I-10, and we expect to see more of this kind of thing as we go on through the night here. Closer look for you, once again, Montgomery County, Walker County, just to the east of 45. Watch out in Conroe. We've got scattered showers a little farther along towards the west and around the center of what's left of the storm. 
And then farther along towards the east here, very heavy rain continuing, 59, 55, I-10, a lousy night to travel. And as always, you really need to be careful. Spectacular. It's going to be comfortable but warm at the same time. Nice nights. Let's just get right to it. It's absolutely spectacular. As we look at a wonderful picture of the Verrazano Bridge, you know folks just get out as early as they can on Friday and traffic's moving fine. Not a lot of traffic on the waterways. I bet you there will be this weekend. It's going to be a beauty. You know, we've gotten nearly three weeks without a day with a of normal temperatures. The streak was at 19 yesterday. We broke it today by hitting 80 degrees, and that is a touch above normal. And we're still near that at this hour, 78, and the air is very, very dry. No humidity here, and the barometer is now on the fall. Got a nice northwest wind at 7. It's down across the five boroughs, but I noticed observations across central southern New Jersey, still a little bit gusty, also across the island. So there's a bit of a breeze this evening after a high of 80 degrees. Now, notice you've got pretty uniform temperatures, cooler north and west, but with a westerly wind, even at the beach, is going to be very nice this weekend, although water temperatures are still on the chilly side. Notice the jet stream here right into the north. Nice summer position. Unfortunately, all the rain remnants of Allison here, thunderstorms over the southeast. They've got nowhere to go, so they're going to stay put. Our next really chance of wet weather won't come until Monday at the very earliest from weak systems over the plains. It will take a while to get here, so we're in really great shape through the weekend. You can see our air is coming from the northwest, and it's all clear over southeastern Canada. The moisture remains to the south. Here across Louisiana, a foot and a half of rain in Baton Rouge, so they just don't need it. That's more than our yearly total here in the tri-state area so far. Okay, clear sky right now. All the Clouds suppressed to the south. This time it's going to be a beautiful night. Notice outside the city, though, there will be a nip in the air by tomorrow morning. Mid 40s to middle 50s, about 62. Should do it at JFK, 62 in the park as well. So crystal clear tonight, looking at 62 degrees, just coming off that full moon. Notice all the clouds to the south and low pressure to the south. High pressure is going to slip into the Ohio Valley tomorrow. That means a northwesterly wind, very low humidity. I'm looking at high at about 80 degrees. Absolutely picture perfect and low humidity. We'll do it all over again as we go into Sunday with temperatures even higher. 90% of possible sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. Sunburn index is going to be high. Get that sunblock on. Pollen count, again, this is the only downside here is that we've got windy conditions, dry conditions. Tree pollens which will start to go down as we head through the middle of June and grass pollens peaking here. We've got weeds low, ragweed, not that season yet, and mold spores are on the moderate side as well. Also, have you seen sand forecast? As we go through the next couple of days, water temperatures about 62 degrees. And again, our wind will be out of the north and eventually going to the southwest by tomorrow afternoon, about 10, 15 knots. Here's my AccuWeather with the forecast. As we go through tonight, looking at temperatures that will go down to the low 60s, probably in the middle 50s, about 10, 15 miles outside the city, maybe upper 40s, far north and west, over to that forecast. Again, moonlit skies tonight should be absolutely beautiful, 50s in the suburbs. For tomorrow, it's a great day, low humidity, it's absolutely gorgeous. Mostly sunny and warm. I mean, there's that little you could go light sweater in the suburbs in the morning. Otherwise, it's going to be a great afternoon. Sunday's even better. 84 degrees, mostly sunny skies. By Monday, there could be a thunder shower. Some clouds early on Tuesday. So knock your temperature down a touch on Monday. Tuesday's fine again. And then all of a sudden, the humidity comes into play. So slowly, after getting off to a, a little bit of a sputtering start here after Memorial Day, humidity, summer, it's all hey, coming it's back. It's yeah. going to feel like summer. It's really going to be nice. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Enjoy. <laughs> thank you, Lee. Mm -hmm. We have breaking news for you at this hour. Let's go up to Newscopter 7 and Shannon Sohn, who is hovering over a fire in Perth Amboy. Shannon. Yeah, this is a huge fire that broke out just about 10 minutes ago. In fact, fire department is just now pulling up to the scene, and you can see a very heavy smoke condition here. This is a it's one thing, but this has been a biblical proportions. I wonder if no, I, I, I just wonder. You know, how much rain did Noah and those people on the ark see? Was it 17.9 inches of rain in three days? Lafayette, Louisiana, 14 inches in three days? Come on. Here in southeast Texas, including Houston, we're almost up to 10 inches. Nacogdoches here in the Piney Woods, nine and a quarter. New Orleans. Are we about to head downstream into the Gulf of Mexico? Will there be a New Orleans tomorrow? Maybe I'm overstating the case, but look at the radar. I mean, we've seen a radar that looks like this. It's like St. Patrick's Day here in New Orleans, the weather into the green. Huh? Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. You know what? It won't go away, and it will come again another day. What's the other day? Tomorrow. Sunday. Here's the center of what used to be a tropical storm, now northwest of Houston, sagging southward. 
And of course, it still pumps up the moisture. And here we are in Louisiana and southern Mis Mississippi. Flood watches are in effect. Mm. Reports of a tornado in the woodlands near Conroe, moving north. Here in Houston and down toward Fort Bend and Brazoria counties, flood warnings are in effect. It's status quo, my friend. I'm afraid, you know, the rain's going to stop for a while and then it's going to pick up, especially during the day, uh, tomorrow afternoon. The radar is going to look very similar to this. The problem is, this thing moved on shore. It's not a hurricane, it's not a tropical storm, it's not even a tropical depression anymore. But it's stationary. That's the thing. It ain't moving. So it's more of the same. No big storms out here to kick this baby out, so we'll have to live with this for the weekend. South and East Texas, Louisiana, southern Mississippi. We rain in southeastern parts of Texas, eastern parts of Texas, and we also have a big feed of moisture coming up and around the system and into Louisiana and southern parts of Mississippi. And we do expect that we'll see more of this kind of thing overnight and right on into tomorrow. Your eye might go to this watch area into the northern plains. We are having a severe thunderstorm watch area into parts of Montana, into Wyoming, and even South Dakota. So we'll watch for the continuing possibility of some severe thunderstorms there. And we are watching for that. Now let's take a look here at what we have coming up. The rainfall totals for parts of the southeast Baton Rouge. Again, we showed you this one just over 18 inches of rain. Houston at the Hobby Airport. 14. Now as we take a look at the Intercontinental Airport in Houston, only 8 inches, only 8. But compared to, uh, to the 14, there's quite a difference just in a short period of uh, a short distance. So, but all of these rainfall totals are certainly threatening to, uh, to flooding conditions. A look at the radar again, you can see Houston, that heavy rain still falling in your area. We have roads closed, many side roads closed, as well as part of Interstate 45. It takes a lot of rain to close an interstate, so you can really understand the seriousness of the situation. Situation. Now this is our estimated precipitation just from today and you can see these yellows and these reds here showing up over six inches of rain in some locations. So uh, we're concerned for flooding. Flash flood watches are continued for right now so if you do have to head out now is probably the time to do it. Most of the moisture here moving into your east but watch out tomorrow there's still the potential for more showers and heavy thunderstorms. Now here's the latest radar imagery. Circulation center itself is over in this area here, but you can see most of the heavy rain now is pushing well to the well to the east of Houston coming into Beaumont and heading up toward the Lake Charles area in the next few hours. But there could be some other areas over here that could form more rain as the surface heating heats up the land surfaces and cause it to become more unstable. So you're out not out of the woods yet, Houston. If you're out and around, I would suggest do not Whatever you do, drive into flooded street areas. The rest of the Gulf of Mexico, relatively quiet, as is the central Atlantic, a couple of weak waves. We don't expect development there. And the eastern Pacific, wonderful weather. Let's get back down to Bob in the studio. Thank you, Hurricane X. The last uh, 12 hours, and will continue over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. We have a very weak low-pressure center. Now there are two, actually. One of them is the ghost of Allison. The other feature is a very steady stream of moist air, a moisture pipeline off the Gulf of Mexico with virtually no steering to get rid of the circulation. Now it's moving very slowly over the last six hours. It's starting to move to the south, but you can see over the last day or so, more than that, two days, this low pressure center moved to the north and it's finally pulled back to the south. Right now it's heading back down to the south and it's just north of Victoria, Texas. And with that warm, moist air pipeline, you can see that on the east side of the circulation, very, very heavy rain. We don't expect too much rain to the west of the circulation, but basically from Houston off to the east, including Lake Charles, Beaumont, and on toward New Orleans, we can expect to see some very heavy rain persisting this afternoon, especially with the surface heating. Most of the heaviest rain will be confined to within about 50 miles of the coastline. With that, let's get back to Bob in the studio with some more weather in your south. Yes, we'll cover the entirety of the south, including New Orleans, the Birmingham area, and getting into Houston to review what's been occurring in terms of rainfall amounts. Look at this at Houston Hobby and the flash flood watch in effect. We've seen copious amounts of rain. We're talking about something like 20 inches around Houston Hobby Airport. And you can see the flood watch remains across the New Orleans area, getting into the greater Houston area. The radar does show a close-up of the Houston area. Beaumont looking at heavy amounts of rain. We have seen at US 90 at Oaks, some 28 inches of rain. And the bulk of this came 
game between 4 in the afternoon, getting up until about 2 a.m. this morning, and it's persisting. Some of this has shifted eastward, and as we get close up on the Houston area, notice that some of the heavier rains in downtown Houston have left. Wait, stay with us. The heaviest area and the downtown area temporarily has had a, a little bit of a reprieve to the rain. But with the low pressure center sitting in here and the surface heating, we expect more showers to develop over the area. And then if the system does strengthen a little bit as it moves offshore, we could see quite a bit more rainfall in the greater Houston area. So the thing to keep in mind is if you don't have to go anywhere, stay in your home and stay put. Don't go unless there's an emergency. And a view, and again, that radar showing all the very heavy rain circulating around the center of the storm. And as Steve just mentioned, there is a chance that it could slide offshore. If it does, it could regenerate into Tropical Storm Allison again. Now, we'll take a different source and show you that the visible satellite, impressive here. A lot of very heavy rain coming down. Check out the rainfall totals. At last check on the close up, we want to check out the rainfall totals and give you an idea of how much has been falling. We've had reports of over 20 inches around the Houston Hobby Airport, Baton Rouge almost 20 inches, Houston at Bush Airport 16, Lafayette, Louisiana 14, the list continues, Huntsville, Texas over 12, and Beaumont 8. So a lot of impressive uh, amounts of rain, and we've even had some reports of 28 inches of rain at some locations uh, that don't have ob observation sites, but uh, in this area, 28 inches of rain. It's just an amazing amount of rain. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Houston area. I want to show you some pictures. It is just uh, horrible there. We're calling it catastrophic flooding, actually, because it is so serious. A lot of the roadways are completely covered with water. Parts of I-45 closed down. Many homes are completely underwater, all the way up to the rooftops. As Steve just mentioned, phone lines are down, power is out, people have uh, been forced to evacuate their homes, of course leaving their cars on the side of the road. Um, a lot of people have been rescued from their vehicles. You can see that's just a typical parking lot and uh, you can see what happened. People had to leave their cars. Uh, because so much rain has been falling in such a short period of time. Latest lightning strikes coming in. Fortunately, we're not seeing any lightning strikes here, but we are seeing some strikes over some of the parishes of Louisiana and also parts of Florida, so keep that in mind. Here's a closer look, and again, the radar showing you the rain continuing to feed in. A little bit of a break now on the west side of Houston. Heaviest rain, Beaumont to Lake Charles, eastward to Baton Rouge. So here's, again, a closer look from Jersey Village down through Bel Air and into Houston. You're getting a little bit of a break, but unfortunately, that's not it. More rain will continue as the afternoon wears on. A different perspective showing you there is no city bus service, significant delays and cancellations at Houston's two airports, and a stretch of I-45 clo is closed near Conroe, just north of Houston. Now let's get a look at what's happening from our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyon. Steve? Well, thanks, Marnie. And heavy rain has fallen overnight over the greater Houston area, as Marnie just mentioned. The threat is still there for quite a bit more rain. Right now, the biggest rain threat has shifted over into Louisiana for the next 6 to 12 hours, all the way to New Orleans, but between New Orleans and the Texas-Louisiana border. And then we also have the threat of the circulation moving offshore. Let's look at the latest uh, visible satellite image, and I'll show you the features we have on there. You can see the spiral clouds spinning around over land with the big band offshore. Put a couple features on there. The low center is getting very close to Port Lavaca, uh, just out, down to the south and west of Freeport, with a trough, that dash line, extending up to the northeast right along this axis right here all the way into the New Orleans area with very moist tropical flow coming off the Gulf of Mexico. This low pressure center was up here early this morning and has steadily dropped to the south. And the, the concern now is if it gets back over the Gulf of Mexico, it would become almost immediately a tropical depression, and then it put, would potentially have the chance to become a, a tropical storm later on. Now, in the Houston area, we'll look and see what rainfall has already fallen there, and these are rainfall accumulations over the course of a couple of days. Now, these white areas indicate rainfall totals exceeding two feet of rain, and within these white areas, some of the areas have approached 40 inches of rain. This big white area here, most of which fell overnight, is the part that has devastated Houston in the last 12 hours. Now, if we look at what is moving right now, notice over the Beaumont area here and off toward Port Arthur and into, into the uh, uh, Louisiana area, quite a bit of rainfall is still accumulating over in that area, and we can see why if we look at the actual radar. Here's Houston right here. 
and you can see most of the bands, the heavy rain, are moving into Louisiana right now. But notice just recently, some of this band is starting to wrap around back into Houston again, right over the area that's already received quite a bit of rain. It is underwater in many locations. Of course, the low center is back down here. Thunderstorms are forming near the low, so we're not out of the woods by any means. The thing you should do if you're in Houston, stay in your home. If you're in a low-lying area, move to a safer location if you're told to do so immediately. In the meantime, off to the east right now, let's look at the rainfall off into the Louisiana area. You can see that there's some very, very heavy rain following, falling, to, falling to the southwest in the uh, Morgan City area. Baton Rouge has also had all these areas in white are basically two feet of rain or more. Uh, some locations is up upwards above 30 inches, and they're still accumulating now. So potential for flooding in those areas is very large as well over the next 24 hours. Now, what's going to happen here, if we look aloft, we see the circulation on this large-scale picture is this little feature right in here. The winds aloft are out of the west-southwest, so if the system does go offshore and start to, to strengthen it at all, uh, so that the circulation reaches into the mid and upper troposphere, it should slide off to the east a little bit. That would take potentially Houston and Texas out of the picture beyond 24 to 36 hours if that happens but that would leave Louisiana and Mississippi still in the rain. So still a lot can happen over the next 24 hours. Be prepared for flooding if you live in a low-lying area and don't drive into high water. Let's get back to Marnie in the studio now. because Pfizer's is four feet behind the baseline and she looks very uncomfortable. And I'm Sharon Result and we also have the possibility of tornadoes in the Midwest. More on that in just a minute. But first, the horrible flooding that is occurring right now in the Houston area. And look at some of these scenes here and it is unbelievable to just even imagine this. Houston continues to see heavy rain and flooding, standing water on roads making it difficult, if not impossible, to get around. Flooding has closed numerous roads and portions of I-10 are shut down as well as I-45 and also I-45 near Conroe. Numerous cars have been stranded in waist-high waters. A state of emergency has been declared for 28 counties in the Houston area. As Carl alluded to, we are still watching the remnants of Allison, and it is highly possible that this thing could eventually emerge back over open water, and we're going to continue to watch that scenario because if it does, it's possible that this will be, uh, once again, a tropical depression. And the main threat with this is going to be the rain, compounding problems where we've already had just disastrous flooding into the Houston area, upwards of 40 inches of rain, some of the storm totals. And just overnight, there are reports on the east side of Houston, some areas 25 to 28 inches of rainfall. That's just overnight. So incredible amounts of rain. And folks along the Gulf Coast here can certainly understand the horrible conditions that Houston is uh, enduring as many areas have seen a surplus of rain here. Baton Rouge picking up 18.42 inches and uh, the list goes on here. New Orleans 10.91 with some heavier thunderstorms moving across this area. And again, Houston at the Hobby Airport, 20.42 inches. But you get east of that region, and we are finding even greater rainfall amounts. Just incredible. Here's some of the 24-hour rainfall totals. So this is what the ground was trying to absorb in just a 24-hour period of time. Notice west side of Houston, uh, generally 5 to 10 inches in and around the Houston area, 10 to 15 inches of rainfall. And watch this green darken here around Beaumont Place and extending down toward Pasadena. And these areas on the order of 20 or more inches of rainfall. Just incredible amounts of rain here and obviously way too much for the ground to handle. These are the storm totals and areas in white here, oh, we're talking 15 to 20 inches of rainfall in many of these spots. Uh, for some of you, it would be on the order of uh, 25 or more inches of rain in and around the Beaumont area. These are some of the spots that are closing in on that 40 inch marker. So incredible amounts of rain and uh, unfortunately more to come and of course again 
again, the big concern is going to be what happens now? We've got the remnants here. We, we've seen this wasn't at all a, a, even a strong tropical storm. It just goes to show you it doesn't have to be a tr strong tropical system if it's in a slow moving environment with not much to push it along and in an environment where it's pulling in a tremendous amount of tropical moisture, it can do a lot of damage to a widespread area. And folks from Houston out through New Orleans can certainly attest to that. We continue to see the rain coming down and coming down hard. Uh, just north and east of Galveston. Around Houston, maybe a slight bit of a break here around Houston proper, around 610, but you get south and east of that area, and that's where the heaviest rain is falling right now, so those will be the regions to watch. New Orleans, some strong thunderstorms continue. We have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings, actually, across this region, so keep an eye out for not only some very heavy rain, but the potential for uh, damaging winds, and uh, that will certainly uh, do some damage because the ground is... bringing every possibility and every problem of the modern age. All Americans uh, were experiencing revolutionary change in terms of the way people lived. But in New York, it was on a more intense level because the size of the city, the narrowness of the geography, the intensity and extremeness of the growth was so much greater than other places. New York had only 100,000 people in 1800. By 1900, it had 50 times as many people. That's an incredible transformation. No city in America had ever grown so rapidly or so large. No city on Earth had ever brought so many different kinds of people together in one place at one time. Between 1825 and 1865, New Yorkers would confront the most daunting question of their entire history. Oh, that angle. Chrysler's, it hasn't been known to be a clay court player until this tournament. She's been known to be oh, a hard court player. That's where she's had her best results, but She's moving so well and sliding into the ball so well. looking at two to four inches over the course of tonight in and around the New Orleans area, Lafayette, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, as we get out towards Pensacola, Florida, this is really good news because we could actually use a lot more rain across the extreme southern areas of Georgia and the panhandle of uh, Florida. We are just going to watch this and see. There's a big question mark on what, what could be. We do have some thunderstorms that have been big in nature. Let's turn it over to Dave to check in with him. That's right, Lisa. This is the report so far today and tonight. These thunderstorms still keep going. White indicates hail. We've seen plenty of that on the roadways in Montana and North Dakota. And some of those thunderstorms are heading right into South Dakota right now. We switch over to National Weather Service Doppler radar showing thunderstorms move out of North Dakota. This is the North and South Dakota line. And Abertine really got smacked here uh, briefly. And then look at this line. Boy, we've got boundaries going on all over the place. This is an outflow boundary from thunderstorms that rumbled through Pierce, South Dakota, an hour and a half ago. Good evening. Welcome to Weather Center. I'm Dave Schwartz. And I'm Lisa Moser. Your Sunday forecast is coming up in just a few minutes. Dave's going to talk about uh, that redevelopment. That's a possibility mm -hmm. uh, with Allison. A lot of people are without shelter. And it's nighttime now. There's not a lot we can do. But certainly we hope that everyone 
everyone is in a safe area. We can stay put because this is a dangerous time over the course of tonight. We'll be talking more about what can happen over the course of the next 24-hour period. But right now, you probably need to stay put. If you haven't made a decision to leave, uh, this is not the best time to try and do that now. We've lost the daylight hours, and things have a tendency to be more threatening at night simply because you don't have the visibility. We do have a lot of flood waters, though. The numbers continue to be added on to. Certainly, uh, one of the hard hit areas, the southeastern vicinity of Houston, over 20 inches of rainfall. We've been looking also at more rain moving into Lafayette, Louisiana. So this number has been added on to over 15 inches of rainfall. Cannot name them all. We don't even have all the numbers in just yet. But still, uh, things have gotten a little bit better for some, a little worse for others. In Beaumont, Texas, Still seeing the rain come in in this area, getting close to 10 inches now. Taking a look at the regional radar for the southeast area of Texas. Notice that we're still seeing rain showers across uh, the Beaumont, Texas area. They're not as plentiful as they were earlier, but we have seen a little more redevelopment. Let's zoom in right here across the Houston area. If you're headed out, look at this. From LaPorte just to the southeast area around Pasadena, we're begin beginning to see a little more rain shower activity. Now, certainly we're not going to concern ourselves with seeing uh, three or four more inches of rainfall with just light to moderate rain showers in the area, but this is going to prolong the drainage problem, and that's what's really happening here. Let's go to the watch area. It's not so much because we're concerned about wind. The winds occasionally have been gusting up around 20 miles per hour in the last hour. That's about it. The wind has not been a factor. What's been a factor is the rain comes down in the same area. It's gotten saturated. We've been seeing trees fall over. We've been seeing our ground tunnels, our ground cables, our ground electricity network flooded out. If you're trying to do some traveling, this is what it looked like earlier today in the Houston area. This is what you need, a boat or either one of those high terrain vehicles, one way up off the ground. Otherwise, travel is virtually impossible. Again, 17,000 people have been uh, moved out of their homes, either voluntarily or just pushed out by the water. So we've got some big problems here over the course of tonight. In addition to not having electricity, uh, tr roads still, a lot of them closed, especially secondary roads, but even parts of Interstate 45, Interstate 10, still under flood waters. Extended flood warnings were issued for Harris County as well as Galveston. So you get the idea. It's a serious situation, a crisis for many of us. And not being able to phone somebody and say, hey, I'm in trouble, or hey, you know, are you okay, that's a little scary. But there's not a lot that can be done overnight tonight. And we do remind you that travel is not advisable. So we hope that you made a decision to uh, get yourself through the next 6 to 12 hours over the course of tonight. It's not a pretty picture. Looking at the bigger picture, we do have a tropical air mass in place across Georgia, Alabama, as well as Florida. And for many of us, this is a welcome sight. Lots of rain showers moving in across Pensacola, Florida, Mobile, Alabama, where we've not seen uh, nearly enough rain this year. But you'll notice we're beginning to see heavy rain, this or infamous Allison. Now, you may recall back in 1989, Allison was a tropical storm. Uh, the name does sound familiar to, to you. Well, that was a year that we also saw some record rainfall in the southeast area of Texas. So this is a little deja vu for some of us, and it's not over yet. Our computer is not in agreement here with everything that may happen, but our experts are saying conditions are very favorable. We could see some development. Right now, we are not seeing any redevelopment of Allison, but it is a possibility. So on that note, let's go over to Dave for more details further to the north. Dave? Thanks, Lisa. We've had ourselves a time also to the north today from severe thunderstorms, Alpena. As we still have scattered showers in the east and more wet weather across the north as well. And as we head on into Thursday, still looks rather unsettled around Detroit, down into parts of the southeast, including New Orleans. Not a good day if this is your weekend for vacation and you're planning on spending time at the beach. We're seeing a lot of active weather once again in New Orleans. Looks like a soggy day here for you. Across parts of the northeast, many of you are enjoying a pretty nice day, but there are just a couple sprinkles here. They're working their way across parts of western New York State and across north central 
Pennsylvania. Otherwise, a pretty broad area of showers and thunderstorms kind of relaxing right now across the upper Midwest. But later on today, we do have the chance here for more showers and some thunderstorms to spark later on this afternoon, especially across eastern Iowa, most of Wisconsin, and across parts of southern Michigan. The reason for that is an area of low pressure that's moving across Minnesota right now, and there are some showers that are working their way across parts of eastern Iowa. Around the Minneapolis area so far this morning, you've seen about a quarter of an inch of rain. Across the southeast, our stationary front still hasn't moved yet this weekend. South of it, though, an abundance of moisture, and we're also dealing with remnants of what was Allison. Locally today, we may see as much as four inches or more of rain across parts of the south. Temperature coast and will it leave anytime soon? We've been dealing with the remnants of what was once Tropical Storm Allison for quite some time now, but it is forecast to shift eastwards to be pumped into the region, and we're basically looking at that heavier rain to kind of subside a little bit for you across eastern Texas as we move on into tonight, but watch out for those repetitive bands of heavy rain. They will just continue to spin slowly towards the northeast through the day Monday. The heaviest rain will continue to be right here on the eastern quadrant of this area of circulation. So southeastern Texas looks like you'll finally get a break from the rain, some sunshine, and a good day to get out there and assess some of the damage. And a Boothville picking up some rain as well as New Orleans International, where a southerly wind is coming in off of the Gulf of Mexico. We've seen over 10 inches of rain in the New Orleans area, slide L, east of New Orleans, even more than that. And it appears that this low pressure area is moving toward the northeast toward the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, New Orleans, and Mississippi. So over the next 24 to 36 hours, we're going to see the rain shifting eastward, although we're still concerned about flooding because of the previous rains, south of which dew points are in the 70s, or at least many locales have dew points in the 70s. We see the rain in Galveston, but the good news is we're not raining in Houston right now. But as we head toward the Big Easy, as we head toward Louisiana, you can see the rain just west and south of New Orleans right now. Perhaps strong and severe storm in parts of the Midwest. We'll update you next. 5,000 homes and businesses have been damaged. Later, the governor publicly thanked emergency crews that have been working around the clock rescuing stranded residents. The last 36 hours has been 911 mode. Um, these individuals have, uh, have saved lives. Uh, the Coast Guard and the, uh, uh, the National Guard, uh, the uh, both Herman Hospital and the hospital helicopters, uh, uh, the PD, uh, Houston PD, Department of Public Safety, all of those individuals have been uh, very active in retrieving individuals from rooftops and uh, making rescue of Texans' lives. And the Federal Emergency Management Agency has set up a toll-free number for Texas flood victims to register for disaster assistance. The number is here on your screen. It's one 800 462 9029. Now on to some other number. Precip totals here coming into the Houston area across Harris County. The highest recorded or the highest amount of rain we've received so far has been in through Greens Bayou at West Mount Houston, picking up more than 35 inches of rain since last Tuesday, the beginning of this event. As we look into Harris County right now and across Houston, we are starting to see a few isolated showers. They've been kind of coming up and over this area throughout the day, but you have not seen the heavy rain that other parts of the Gulf Coast are seeing. We are watching the showers continuing to come down here across southern Louisiana, whereas that area of low circula uh, circulation is still being found well to the south of Louisiana. And we are just continuing to get the rain falling here across New Orleans. It's it's been really from New Orleans South where we've been finding the heaviest amount of precipitation and we're going to continue to get the rain here into New Orleans. As we look off to the south, there's more precipitation out here, so we will continue to find the rain throughout the evening hours. We do have flood watches in posted for portions of eastern and southern Louisiana and those are in effect until the evening hours. Now outside of the rain that we're seeing in Houston, most of it has been very light falling across a northern and western Louisiana. And into eastern Texas. As we look at a satellite vantage point, looks like the circulation is now, which is now offshore, is starting just about 80 miles to the south of Cameron, Louisiana. It's a very broad circulation, so we'll continue to watch this, perhaps moving a little bit to the east rather slowly, and that will continue to bring the rain in here. There is the possibility that this could still 
gain strength and form into a, a come up to another tropical storm or come back to tropical storm status. So we certainly need to keep it post to keep you keep watching this for the next several days. As we look elsewhere across the southeast, we have a frontal system draped from lower Alabama and into southern Georgia. And we have been noticing numerous showers and even some strong thunderstorms from southern Georgia all the way through Florida. But most of the thunderstorms are starting to die down now that we're losing the heating of the afternoon. Still raining here in Valdosta over to Brunswick, the Golden Isles and into Jacksonville. And as we look farther to the south, we're seeing some thunderstorms fire up right along the Cape Canaveral area, Merritt, Merritt Island, around in Melbourne, and those are pushing to the east. And as we look farther to the south across southern Florida, there have been a few isolated showers southwest of Miami right now, and those are going to be pushing to the east. Through the evening now... I just sense if she could get a couple games, her confidence and her timing. Oh, 